but uh, off we go. So, all right, well, welcome today. We're gonna go through the, um, the Smart Learning Suite 202, which is really focusing on asynchronous instruction with the Smart Learning Suite. So I am gonna share my screen with you and we will kind of get going, talk about what we're gonna accomplish today and making sure that you have the time hands on to actually get it done. And we're gonna keep it pretty tight and, uh, and I think it should be fun because I think these are more familiarity with these, uh, with this, with this one tool. Okay, so I'm going to present my entire screen. All right. Hello, everyone. Did this class just start? You welcome to this class. Yes, it is. We're just starting now. Because we were sent the wrong link in Zimbra. Just to let you know, we were hanging out by ourselves, and we just went into. Um, the, the training details and copy and pasted this site. So I don't know if anybody else is has the same problem or not. No problem. They did cancel a bunch of sessions today due to low enrollment. So it might have been that you were using the link you were originally sent. And then I think they got rid of a couple of them. So there might have just been some mix up in communication with the correct links. Okay. Thank you. So it's okay that we're in here and then we'll get credit for this. Yes. Thank you. So welcome. Welcome everyone. So um, let me just, uh, okay, great. Everybody looking at my SLSO screen or no? Is, uh, thumbs up if you're looking at my thumb. Excellent. Okay, great. So we're talking about f facilitating engaging independent work. So that's like another word for asynchronous delivery. And our focus is going to be on sort of one, some of the higher level grades. Uh, and that just means our, our example that we're going to work through is going to be looking at maybe something a little bit more complicated rather than uh, something that was a little more juvenile. And so uh, we're targeted to younger younger students. So SLSO 2.0, I presume that everybody here has either attended the SLSO, the the prior sessions in the intermediate uh, smart learning band. So, um, uh, so that's, um, so that's just my hope. Actually, I'm hoping my recording is actually going to record what I think I'm presenting. It should be fine. All right. So, um, so first of all, um, my name is Jesse Berg and I'm with the office of educational technology. Um, and I'm with my colleague today, Beth Rooney, who will introduce herself. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Beth Rooney. I work with Jesse out of EdTech, so we're both happy to be here with you today. I'm happy to be with each other today, too. Yeah, actually, uh, my, my space has plenty of uh, opportunities for social distancing, so I actually got to see a colleague face-to-face, -face and I didn't just go grow arms out of my ears. Um, if this would look like to me sitting here. Um, so we're we're like sort of technology integration coaches, and so we are um, we work at schools in a normal in a normal world. We work in class with teachers uh, uh, to help to integrate these different tools, model lessons, co-develop lessons, um, things like that. So I work with about more more specifically with about eight different schools, and so does Beth. So does everybody here with? Can I see just a a thumbs up if you know who your ed tech coach is, the person who's your ed tech coach. I see I see most. I see one or two people who may not know. If you do not specifically know who your ed tech coach is, just put your school in the chat and we'll we're gonna put out a link to all the coaches. But if you don't know who your coach is, put your school in the chat. We will see your name anytime you add it to the chat. So I don't need your name again. Uh, just the school's perfect. Thank you. And we will get you your coach's names who you can email directly and we'll work with you one on one uh, on all sorts of not just smart learning suite, the Google stuff, uh, uh, helping you with grade pass back with sis, um, helping you design units for uh, with your students. Uh, kind of like a catch-all instructional technology, but we're here for you guys. And we're also PFT. We're, we're basically, we're district teachers. We're on a teacher scale. So everything we do together is just collaborative. That's 100% of our role. It's, it's collaboration and support. Um, so one thing that I was mentioning today was, uh, actually, I'd like to step back. The Smart Learning Suite, one of the things that's 
is very interesting about this tool is that you can deliver a lesson synchronously, meaning face to face. And you see this little picture of this teacher. It's like, you know, you're greeting your student at the door. Synchronous lesson is like even in a virtual environment, a synchronous is going to mean you're there present with the child. And with regards to the smart, all the smart tools, smart learning suite, the smart notebook, which is the software, your smart board. Um, for synchronous lesson delivery with smart learning suite online, which is the piece we're talking about today, students are going to get to your lesson through by logging on to hellosmart.com. And that's, uh, um, that's when you're sharing a lesson with your students in real time. Now, in contrast, I think this is a very fascinating thing about this smart learning suite and um, that you can also deliver a lesson asynchronously for independent practice. And we know this, but I'd like to, I like to look at things by comparison whenever I can. So, and I like to explain things by comparing them. So in our asynchronous lesson delivery with smart learning suite, that's when you're going to provide a link for the students to access the file. And, it, and, and when a lesson is delivered to students that way, students can do it anytime and the teacher doesn't need to be present. So it, I think it's fascinating that you can deliver a lesson in both different ways with the smart learning suite. And it's a good thing to understand to understand the tool. Um, is there any, any question about that piece, by the way, that's synchronous versus asynchronous? The only thing in the chat were questions about coaching, and I answered them. For Great. You. So, if you would please, I'd I'd like you all to. For, so, the the way this workshop goes, you're going to first uh, log on to my my classroom, my smart classroom, and synchronously, I'm we're going to go through a lesson, and I'm going to experience a few of the different activities, and then we're going to log off. And then we're going to build this lesson ourselves. So for our, our purposes today, log, go to hellosmart.com and, uh, and join as a guest. Join as a guest. And please use the number that you see on the screen, 3239, as the class ID. I, I see a couple people maybe having a little trouble like getting on, but I'm I'm starting to see three people in here. I'm actually so on your screens. You're probably in between two different tabs. You're probably in between your Smart Learning Suite tab and then you've got this Meet tab. I'm going to be asking us to go in between those two tabs uh, to compare a teacher view to your own view to get a deeper understanding of this. I see Jim, Joaquin, Matt, and T uh, Timothy have joined the classroom so far. Waiting for a few more people. We're a pretty small group. So Sorry, I had to open up a new window. I was signing in as myself instead of as a guest. You want us to sign in as guests, right? Yes, yes. Uh, your, your children will be logging on as students, not as a guest. We're doing it as a guest strictly for the purposes of the professional development workshop. Now I see seven people. I think that's about it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, it looks like we have ten. More and more people are coming in. Yes, Timothy, you're going to log in as our student. We want you to join as a guest just because when you go to sign in, when we go to build, you're going to need to be in there as a teacher. And it can sometimes get confusing for SMART. If you're in as a student, it won't let you build. So then you got to log out of it. Just easier to do as a guest for today. All right. Uh, I see eight people in there. Should I do it? If I need to wait for a moment, that's absolutely fine. We have plenty of time to go through what we need to go through. Uh, do we need a, is there anybody who needs another, another minute? Okay, 
we need one, another person needs another minute. So um, if you want to come off mute and describe the problem you're having uh, to logging on, or if you just feel you need to open up a new browser window and uh, or incognito window, let us know when. I think that was uh, Mr. Levy. If you want to come off mute and tell us when you're what the problem is. Yeah, um, I got kicked out of Google Meet, so I've, I fell behind. Um, I'm on Smart Learning Suite, but I'm on to my uh, teacher. It, they, they put me in the teacher. So God, where do I go from there? You, know how to, um, you can log out of there if you know where to find the log out button. But you know what you can also do? Are you familiar with an incognito window in Chrome? Um, you know what that is? I kind of know what it is, but I uh, haven't used Let it. Me, I'll describe this quickly for you, see if this works. At the very top of your screen, do you see where it says file? Mm -hmm. Please go down there and click the third one down, which says new incognito window. Yep. And that ought to just disassociate your log on from anything. So use that one and then go to hellosmart.com and then sign as a guest and you can use the code that I've got here. That's just fine. It's perfect time to have a sip of water. Yeah. Okay. How's that coming? Uh, join us guest. And what's the number? Three, two, three, nine. Three, two, three, nine. Okay, great. Perfect. I should see it pop in in two seconds. There it is. Excellent. So um, you're on this page, and actually, I'm a, I've got this structure that I'm at teacher pacing, which is something we have probably looked at in the past. Um, and I'm going to take us to the next page here, where um, we're going to talk about what our agenda is. And really, we're going to use the Smart Learning Suite to create uh, some engaging lessons for our students. And what the purpose is, is I want you to experience these activities, and then I want to take us through making them ourselves. And hopefully, when we leave this session at 3, we will have a better sense of developing, building, and delivering lessons using Smart Learning Suite. But yeah, this focus today, we're going to really be looking at the asynchronous delivery. So here's a lesson for us, okay? And you'll notice that there's nothing for you to do on this page. This has not been set up for you to be able to do anything yet. And it says rates and ratios. This is what our model lesson is going to be on. Students will be able to convert rates and ratios in order to solve real world problems. Okay, looks nice. There's a picture on there. There's a title on this card. Sounds good. On we go. This would be when you're thinking to yourself, how does this compare to my own teaching? This might be the kind of an intro title card that you would use in your own teaching of a lesson. So now on the next page, here you have a page where I would normally, this was where you'd expect to be working, right? So I'm going to actually convert this page to an activity. And if you want to click over to the meet tab real quick, you can actually see me do this. And because I, I, I wouldn't mind you seeing it if you if you click over because you'll get to see the process of converting a static page into a uh, into a handout page. So I'm actually just going to click on the people icon from right within the lesson and live in real time. I'm going to click individual handout activity and it's going to instantaneously become editable for you. So now, if you click back on your SLSO page, you should be able to enter that handout activity and start to work on it. Please, when you enter that activity, just put some marks on the page of some kind, either using a pencil tool or uh, the text tool, something like that. I see many people successfully entering this. That's great. And when you've succeeded in adding a few marks to your content, maybe spend a minute there experimenting with the tools that you have to work with. When you feel you're all done, 
click the done button. I see six students have started. That means, oh, I guess I'm really only expecting. No, I think I'm expecting nine because I don't think Beth and I count in this. Uh, I mean, you and your lesson. Beth didn't lesson. Okay, so yeah. good. So we really should have excellent. One, two, four, six, eight, nine. Okay, great. Great. Everybody's in this lesson working away. Joaquin and Monica have done a few things to their pages and they have checked that they are done. So please, everyone else, uh, in this next minute, um, add a little something to your page and find that done button and click that done button. Excellent. Almost every, oh, oh, terrific. And so we have eight out of nine people that everybody has completed. That's wonderful. So now I'm going to ask you to please click over to a different tab. Click over to the meet tab a minute so you can see what it looks like from my end as a teacher when you as a student finish your work. Someone come off mute and describe what you see in the meet tab. I see a list of student names with a green check mark by those that have completed the task. Perfect. So for as a teacher, that's what it looks like to me. So when I want us to take a, a, a use this instant here to step back a minute and, and think about this from a from the treetops view. I delivered a lesson to you. You did it. You said you were done. And but from my, and from my side, I was able to see that you were all done. But where was all this work saved? All this work was saved exactly in the very same file. So you're actually all working in the same file. And on this page, which was turned into a handout, all your work kind of stacked up on that one page. So this is very different from any other kind of computer file we've worked with. It's different from Google Docs where, yes, you can collaborate, but we're always making a copy for each student. In the smart learning suite, all the student work stays in that file that you created. And I find that that's something that's an abstract concept that I like to draw attention to. Does that is that a good clarification? Did anybody find that that was useful to um, hear in that way? Yes. You've been asked to repeat it again, Jesse. I'm gonna have to, I've been asked to repeat it again. Yes. Okay. I'm very happy because I think if you understand this idea, Smart Learning Suite, it, it seems so natural. But until, because like I said, this is a different kind of computer file. It just works a little bit differently. So when we, we've gone through this file page by page, and when we got to this page, which happens to be page seven, that becomes a handout. All of you are on page seven, but at page seven isn't one page thick. It's one page with the teacher handout that's plain. It's one page that's got uh, Mr. Matt's on it. It's one page that's got Mr. Uh, Mr. Oye, um, Oyeyame's on it. It's got Jim's page, Monica's page, Miss Ogan's page, Pam's page. So page seven is actually thick. It's got like seven students' work stacked up right in that page seven. So there's a couple more questions. Um, yeah. The saving student work, it will automatically save the student work for them. You will access your file the same way, and anytime you go back to it, the work will all be there until you decide to delete it, if you decide to delete it. Um, and students will have access to this file outside of class if you give them the asynchronous link. And we'll get to that at the end of the session. So this is. Yeah, these smart learning suite links. So we, you, you access this through hellosmart.com, which is synchronous. And we have, uh, a, a, but yet we can also share the link to this file out, which allows students to enter this file asynchronously, basically meaning you're not in the room, but it's still the same file. It's like a, it's like a computer file that has a front door and a side door. The front door is the is the synchronous and the side door is the nobody's home, but come get your work anyway door. But it's still the same file. And then one more question was the file on your Google Drive. Uh, SLSO will automatically make a copy and save it to your Google Drive, but it's not going to be, it's a little different than other files in your Google Drive. So once you click that, you still have to open it 
with SLSO and then share from SLSO. You can't, it'll live in your Google Drive, but you still need to open it in SLSO, if that makes sense. I'll, I'll show you that. I'm going to take a, a, a 10 second tangent and then we'll move on. I'm just going to click another tab in my browser, which is my Google Drive. And you'll see this is my Google Drive, which shows you a subfolder 2021 coaching and another subfolder, which is the SLSO 2.0. That's where we are. And this one that's highlighted in blue is actually the one that we're working on. So you can see here that this file actually lives in my Google Drive? That's a really good question. So when we go to create this file, we'll choose a location in our Google Drive where we want to create it from, and we'll go from there. All right, so now let's see what everybody did. So if, you're, if, you, if you click over to the Meet tab, if you stick with me on the Meet tab, now I'm going to look at some of this work. Your, your green check marks have indicated to me that you think it's done. So I'm going to go here. I, you see Mr. Uh, Mr. Abi, uh, as uh, I hope I didn't say your first name wrong. I bet I did. Um, wrote his name on there. Um, oh, you got it right, Jess. I got it right. All right. I like that. <laughs> um, and this person uh, started the, uh, wrote his little something, I think, with the text tool. And I'm not, and this person wrote with the text tool, which I can see right here as a teacher, I can expand this because yeah, it is small. Um, I could add a little feedback. I could add a little, I could use the, um, uh, the, the image tool to, oh yeah, look, I think you did a great job. So I'm going to give you a check mark. Uh, I'm going to give you a nice check there and then I'm going to get my pen and I'm gonna give you a big check mark on your check. So that's obviously a wonderful job. You got a blank check to show it, your reward for doing such a, your acknowledgements for just doing such a great job. So I'm actually using these arrows up at the top right to toggle through the student work. And you can see that it's been done here. These different your students have added their work to it. So the value here is you've, experience doing the work and then you've seen it from the teacher's side what it looks like from the teacher's side so so thank you for your uh, participation thus far now this next page is a page where you can't do anything to it yet so again i'm going to live in real time i'm going to convert this page to a handout i'm just uh, as a teacher on that little person icon if you want to if you want to watch me do it click on the meet if you want to just wait for it to happen, you can just stay on uh, this your own SLSO file tab. So I'm going to click on the people tab, and here I have the chance to turn it into a handout activity, so I'm going to do it. I just clicked on it, and now you're free to get working on it. But this time I'm going to ask that you do whatever you do in one minute. You have one minute to muck up that page any way you possibly can. Whoever mucks it up the most gets a virtual, oh, gets a blank check. Jackie's gonna sign the check this time. Yeah, this time I'll sign the, I'll sign it. I'll, I will sign the blank check that you put on your SLSO page. We we'll, might as well just have a little fun with that while we're at it. And again, so here you go, uh, 20 more seconds to, uh, to muck up that page, answer, um, decorate, illuminate, elucidate. All right, great. I see a check mark, and I think I'm going to go with it. We'll see what, oh, I see two, three, four. Oh, the check marks are rolling in it. So this is a really nice way for me to gauge where our students think they are in their uh, in their in their completion of work. I so I kind of let everyone know the difference between turning something in here and turning something in a Google Classroom. This check mark just indicates that the student believes they're done. It's not going to give you a notice that they've turned it in like Google does. You're going to need to go back into this file, pull up this page, and check that they finished it. It's just you know. 
I have people ask me, you know, it doesn't tell me when they're finished. And this won't do that. You're going to need to go back to the assignment to see if they're finished. Well, I just found one that had some text and uh, a picture. So I'm going to, I'm going to add, oh, and they're, they're really doing it now. So I'm going to add that check for understanding and we're going to sign it right here. Yes, great. You can watch it as they're doing it. Yeah, too. one, oh, oh. You got to, there we are. That ought to do it. And this is definitely legal tender. So, so yeah, so we actually are, are able to kind of uh, work on this file at the same time. And that's to provide some feedback and to see different students work. One of the ways that I really like to use handouts is when one student does something particularly interesting on one, I like to use that as a teaching tool for the rest of the class. And the fact that I can bring it up like this, so you've got in one tab your SLSO, and in one tab you've got the ability to see what the teacher's presenting. It allows you as the teacher to use student work to, to teach the class. It creates a very student-centered environment. So the next thing that we'll look at in this file is, oh, this is just a little bit of a, um, a check, a, a, a share out. So in the check, in the, in, the, in the chat, in the meet, if you would, just please mention something that, um, mention how you could use this handout feature in your subject area. Mention how you could use this handout feature in your subject area. Matthew, students can interact with the document once they turn it in. You'll see in yours you have that done button, but you can click again and I think it says edit, right? If you click on edit, then the students can go back in and work on it again. And yes, you can keep all the kids on the same page. As long as you have it on teacher pasting, you're able to, whatever you change your screen to is what your student's screen changes to as well. But you do have the option if you have like three pages in a row and you tell them I want you to do page one, two, and three, and then we'll come back together. You can switch it to student pasting. They can all do those pages you just assigned to them. And then when you're ready to call them back, click on teacher pasting, and they're pulled right back to the page the teacher wants them on. Lots of great thoughts there in the chat on how to use this feature. Uh, I'm going to let. So one thing I kind of wanted to mention, um, you may be wondering, I'm going to take us back a couple pages real quick. Oh, yeah, this will be fine. Right from this, this page here, you might wonder where this page came from. And these would look like very perfect kind of handouts. We literally imported a PDF. And, and by importing a PDF into SLSO, it becomes instantly editable because the kids have those editing tools that you yourselves were using. So I just want to highlight the fact that um, this document actually was a PDF that we imported and used as a starting point. And that's the way we're always going to start to build from S in SLS is from a, a PDF or a PowerPoint. If there's a, a, some basic lesson content we can bring into this and then it can work its magic from there. Jesse, one of the questions that came up is, is there a timer? I, I'm not sure if they added that yet. I know it's coming, but I couldn't remember if it was in with the last updates. I I feel like I need to follow up about the timer, too, because they're in on your smart board, there is de definitely a timer. Um, and you can certainly have a Google timer. I believe in certain activities there are timers, but not on a specific page. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll look into that one. Thanks. And then somebody asked about importing resources from Nearpod. I wasn't, I don't know that you did. You know, Nearpod. Nearpod is a different animal. First of all, one thing, I think it's great that you like it. And, and if it's working for you, and if your school has a full subscription to it, that's terrific. Nearpod is an add-on that you deal, like, you can create certain types of interactive questions based on a PowerPoint using Nearpod. But the Nearpod is already an add-on from a Google slideshow. So the, the question is, the, the answer to the question, can you import a Google slideshow into Smart Learning Suite, is yes. You can import a Google slide, you can upload a PowerPoint, you can import a PDF. I believe you can do a JPEG, although, no, you do a JPEG differently, I believe, by importing a picture. Um, you can import a Google Doc, you can import all the different Google format, uh, 
files into SLSO and you can import PDFs. Um, a picture you do a different way and we'll look at that. So I took us to the next page. Why don't you please take a minute or two on the uh, match them up? Just maybe I'll, I'll, I'm looking at my clock, two minutes on the match them up. So here, just start and try. So that's a matchup up game. Pretty hard, huh? I found this matchup game to be pretty hard. Now, the matchup game, let's just talk about it for a second here. Um, the matchup up game is something that we're going to build. And uh, it's kind of like your creativity is the limit. You can actually add images or pictures. I'm sorry, images or words. Uh, images or text, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And then... Uh, uh, bring the two things over and into the flowers. And um, <clears throat> if it's a if it makes a match, it makes a match. And you can check the matches. But it, what you're not going to get as a teacher as, is feedback on this as a test. This is not a test that uh, is something that gets graded, that gets sent to you. Um, if you want to see students' answers on this, you can add them. Oh, you know what? I think I must have a participant who is uh, is not muted. It's my jab or my jabber speaker is just going crazy. Um, no, everybody looks about right almost. All right, there we go. All right, so um, so that's the match map game, and we'll look how to build this and shortly. But so if you really were a teacher who uh, insisted on knowing whether your students did this work, if knowing that it was independent practice is not enough, then you could ask students to take a screenshot of this and submit that. But really, there's no way if the kids do it, it's going to be correct because it's not going to let you practice things that are wrong. It can spit the answers right back out to your students are practicing it still incorrectly. It's meant to be strictly independent. Um, so yeah, again, in the, sh in the chat, if you like the match em up game, how might you use a match em up? I'm going to go look over the chat and read these as they come up. Sure. Look at, oh, components of a, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Nice thoughts. Nice thoughts on how to use a match them up. Um, there's also a lot of neat um, ideas on the smart exchange, which is how, something that I'm hoping we'll have a chance to uh, to share later. So yeah, there's definitely lots of ways that we can use the uh, the, the match it, match up game for reinforcement of different ideas. And also, you know, the smart learning suite has a lot of other types of games, like rank order. You could have or um, um, Super sort. Sorting. So the, between sorting, matching, and ranking, there's a lot of different variety. But that's the one we chose for today. So this next page, which I dragged this along to, is something that uh, is a ready-made is a ready-made exit ticket, basically. So um, I'd like you to go in here and explain what you've learned. Maybe please, as uh, as I look at this, uh, as I look at this handout. I'd, uh, I'd please, okay, well, the quest, the prompt is ex pretend your, oh, yeah, okay, pretend your friend was absent. How would you explain one thing you've learned? So, yeah, if you could please put one thing that you've learned in this session about SLSO that you maybe didn't know before, please add that to your exit ticket.
seen a few check marks so that's great so that we'll have plenty of time to build we'll look at you know maybe one a oh, great maybe one more minute or 30 30 more seconds on this um I'm, we'll we'll go to the full 220 that's fine because then these will be nice to review with everyone Great, almost everybody has a check mark. So I'm gonna start with someone with a check mark. So if you've already finished this uh, handout, then please come over to the meet tab and, and I'll click us through a few different responses. I'm really curious what everybody put. Okay, we like that a PDF can become interactive so students can complete an assignment. Absolutely game changer about this. Students can work asynchronously on assignments without the teacher being present. Absolutely. I've learned how to change into a printout. Okay, I've, and I think you mean a handout. Also, I've learned that student pages come up in separate folders for easier cor correction. Yeah, I'd call them, they actually become just pages right within the file, kind of attached to the original page. I liken it like a book has a page, a page, a page, a page, a page. Then all of a sudden there's a fat page that has all the student work stacked up. And then a skinny page, a skinny page where, you know, it's not a handout. I don't I'm, think of it as like a sheet where everyone shared their link. And you have everybody's link on one page. Oh, yeah, that's another way to think about it. I never thought about it that way. Thank you, Beth. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Not so sure uh, how we'd explain this to another person. Let's. Let's just let's let's support you with a can we can we reach out and maybe uh, discuss this um, next week, like with a follow up email to see if this uh, how we can apply some of these skills. If by the end we don't, we certainly don't want anybody leaving with no idea how to use this stuff at the end of the session. But um, uh, so, yeah, turning it to PDF, so it's a, a bunch of. Bunch of people remarked on how to make a PDF interactive. And I think at the base level, that is that is really a key, a key ingredient, especially to decide, like to take your first step with this tool. Uh, making a PDF into an interactive worksheet is a is a great first step. And that's a step that we're gonna do today. So So for today, I'm actually going to skip that last reflection page. And um, as we import our own content, so in a moment, we're going to start to build. So what I'd like you to do is if you, have, if you know you have a PDF in your Google Drive, that's fine. No need to pay attention to this. What Beth is doing is she put the link, which is also, I believe, interactive right from your um, SLSO tab, she's just giving you a little bit of material to start from, that algebra worksheet, so you have a PDF to work from. Because we're going to be, when we start to build momentarily, we're going to start from that PDF or a PDF. So if you have one, if you're a science teacher and you already have a science PDF saved on your desktop you're using, use that. If you are a social study teacher and you have a map you want to import this PDF, use that. If you have nothing, rather than spend time trying to find something, please use the PDF that is on Jeff's presentation as well as in the chat. Okay, so if we could just see some thumbs up, it's just to make sure a thumbs up that, that you have a uh, you have a PDF to work with, and we know we can move on. Great, thank you for coming on uh, on video. To, uh, to, to, to give the quick thumbs up. We appreciate that. Thank can you, you. Can you um, just put it in another tab and then copy and paste it in? How do you do that? No, no, PDFs you're gonna wanna, it's not gonna always work quite like that. No, it's not gonna work like, you're gonna need this file to be in your Google Drive. It is. The vocabulary that we're gonna use is we're actually gonna import that PDF into Smart Learning Suite. And it's going to be like it turns it into its own special box. And when it it's going to look the same but behave differently when it comes out the other side. It's actually right. going to make a new copy of that file. So you're going to have the original PDF. But now you're going to have, in addition, 
uh, an SLSO version of that PDF. Okay. Um, how do I do that? Where do where I I know where it is in my drive. Then stop right there. Then you're at the perfect spot. Okay. And then Matthew asked, can we import a JPEG or does it have to be PDF? When if you're you going to have a JPEG, when it opens up in preview, you should have an option to export as a PDF because the JPEG's not going to import like that. So open it up in preview, click on export as PDF, and then you'll be good to go. To, to, to add to what Beth's saying, which was perfectly, actually impeccable given the circumstances, if in the future you want to add pictures that you've got saved on your desktop, that there's a different way right within SLSO to import pictures, which is even easier, which you can do at any time. So pictures are actually a very flexible way to work. You don't have to import a picture first. You have to do the PDF import first. So let's just take a deep breath because we're about to build this file that we saw. And so to, to one of the first things that you're going to do, I'm going to ask you to, um, I'm going to ask you to actually exit, exit my, my class. So I'm going to need you to ask you to leave my class. I see a person dropped out. I'm down to eight. If you, now I'm down to six. You can give them all the boot, Charles. I can give you all the boot. As the teacher, I can give you all the boot, but I'm also seeing that you're all learning how to, or know how to, because, you, well, you might need to describe this to your students, so it's a useful thing to be able to do yourself. Okay, and on a five, four, three, two, one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give everyone else the boot. How, how do you exit? Oh, click on the person tab. There's on the left, there's a person tab, and you should be able to uh, exit from there. And then Mr. Boyami is asking for the class ID again, but we're exiting the class, so you shouldn't need the ID again, unless you, um, if you're asking about your class ID, once you enter SLSO, you're going to get your own personal class ID, but we're no longer going to be in Jesse's class today. Is this over? No, no, no. We're just about, this is, the first half of this lesson was you experiencing the lesson, and the second half of the, of the PD is you building what you just saw. So everyone needs to leave Jesse's classes as a student so that now you can join your own SLSO page as a teacher. Okay. So now in my meet, I'm going to start going through what we just did. So I'm going to do a little I do and then a we do. All right. So I am actually going to go over to my, I'll describe it here. We're going to go to our drive, our Google Drive. Then we're going to go to new, then more, then smart learning suite. And if you're still looking at my meet, we're going to click this green button, which, which you'll see later says add activities. And then we're going to do this, where if you see this gold star, this import a resource. So I'm going to go do that now. I just described it. Now I'm going to go do it. So I'm going to come over here to my Google Drive. I'm going to go to New, More, and scroll down to Smart Learning Suite. When I click on that, I get to the screen where I want to be on. Now, you might need to log on. You might have a screen that tells you to log on. And if so, log on as a teacher. But I'd like you to get, I'd like to see a thumbs up when your screen looks like my screen. Great. I got a thumbs up. I got two thumbs up. Got three. Actually, raise your hand. That way I won't do the use the raised hand feature in the in the Google Meet. That way I'll be sure when everybody is there. Great, great, great. That's easier now. I don't have to remember. I can just keep looking back. Okay, wonderful. Miss Miss Marie is there. Great. And how about how about Miss Kennedy? Yeah, it works. Mark. It's the same way when you upload something from your device, right? Sorry, I was logging to another class. You're jumping ahead on us. It's all right. 
Okay, well, it seems like everybody's there. Ms. Kennedy, you're good? Thumbs up, you're good? You're th uh, excellent, okay, good. So now I'm gonna go to click this Add Activities button, this big green one. Um, when I click this big, big green Add Activities button, you'll notice that the first thing that comes up is this button that says Add or Import a Resource. So I'm gonna actually, this is where you've got one shot at the beginning of developing a lesson to import your PDF. It doesn't have to be the first page of your presentation. We can always rearrange slides later, but the import of that resource has to be the first thing we do. So I'm gonna click import the resource, and since I know it's from my Google Drive, I'm gonna to go to my Google Drive. And this is where, Monica, you're seeing the same thing. If you know it's something you have downloaded on your desktop, then you would select from my device. Um, and let me see, 2021 coaching. Now I should have, okay. I'm looking in here and then I know it's in SLSO 2.202 and there is the file. So I'm gonna then click on that file and click select. Now, as you see, as it gets sucked into the vortex of smart learning suite, and becomes an SLSO file, uh, you see what I just got. I'm now in the editing mode of this file, and there is that PDF that you were looking at before. So I'd love everybody to get to this stage of the game. I'm gonna lower everybody's hands in the chat, and then when you get to this stage, I'm gonna ask you to, uh, to raise them again. I'm gonna lower all hands, okay. And you, I'm, if you had already done, Miss um, Maria, if you can, can you use the raise hand feature in the Google Meet? You, it's next to the uh, mute. Wonderful, thank you so much. Those nonverbal cues are really helpful when teaching one of these lessons. Keep it up, keep it up. Thank you. It helps us to pace too. We want to give everyone the time that they need to complete it, but we also don't want to leave you sitting there thinking, come on already. I've done that. Mr. Mr. Oyayami, you got it? You good? Okay, let's see that raise hand feature. Great. All right, so you've got that. Now notice I'm in the I'm I'm looking at this file in a way that I haven't looked at it before. I'm looking at it with this blue background. You saw it with the black background before. That's because I'm in editing mode. From here, I can actually right up at the top, I can change the name of it, which I'm gonna do. And I suggest making a copy of this file for each one of your classes. So before you use it to teach from, you'll want to make a version of it for each one. Oh. Uh, when we, Beth, can you answer that? I think a good sure. question came up in the chat. That may um, be your, when you clicked on the PDF link, that was just supposed to be, that is this handout that Jesse just pulled in. If you have your own content to use, you don't need that, that link. You don't need that PDF link at all. If you do not have your own content saved, then just use the one that we have so that you understand the, the, the task without having to spend time finding a resource that you like. Yeah, much more important that we just go through the exercise of importing a PDF. Okay, okay. So how do you, how do you... if I may. So I clicked on it and it opened up on my computer. Was I supposed to download that to my computer or save it to my Google Drive? There's a step that I missed in there. You could download it to your computer or you could save it to your Google Drive. Either okay, way. thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. So, how do you... Okay, so it finished. I don't know if it's finished editing, but I'm, I have it all here. Am I supposed to make a copy of it? No, no, you're good. Does your computer, does your screen look like my screen? If you click between the two tabs, does, does your screen look mostly like my screen? Yes. Wonderful. Then you're perfect. So I just went ahead and renamed it. Um, but no, we're going to continue editing because we're going to continue to work on this file. So do I have to rename mine too? You don't have to. It, it might be useful to it because if I'm thinking ahead, I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be a math lesson. This is going to be my math section 103. So this might be um, decimals section 103 or ratios section 103 or ratios section 104. I might be thinking about logical names, but no, it's actually not necessary that you rename it now for our purposes. 
but that is how you'll rename it. And of course, the naming conventions that you choose are going to help you be organized in your teaching. If you have two classes, so now you're working on one. If you want to make another copy for another class, you have to give that a new name. Yeah, you'll, but there's a super easy way to just make a copy of the whole darn thing. And then you rename that one. We'll do all of that. When we get to the end of the building, we're going to show you how to make a copy, and we're going to show you the different ways you can share it to your students. Uh, I'm even going to call this one SLSO 2021 template, and I might decide that as a teacher, all my files, I want to use the name template because I don't want to mess them up. And then when I, when I, I might even make a copy of that template one for each class as a way to keep a fresh, clean copy. All right. So next let's, um, let's, let now the next thing we're going to do is add a new page. So if you please click over to the meet tab, I want to show you how to add a new page. So I'm going to click the plus and here it's going to say new page. New page is where I'm going to add that title page. So a title page, it, it's going to be pretty intuitive here. I'm going to use my text tool. I'm going to double click in this, the, the, the text, which is already on the page. And I'm going to call it algebra and ratios. And as a description, I'm going to just click in here and call that, uh, uh, PA core MA question mark question mark uh, 103 uh, uh, dot AA uh, AA. Now I don't really know the standard and I just made that up. But um, you might put the standard in there and exploration of ratios. So I've got a little text in there. Now I might want to add a picture. So to model this for you, I'm going to click this picture button here in my editing, and I'm going to just type in the word algebra. And uh, there, ooh, that's a, that is that word art that I saw that I liked. And I say, you know, I'm a person, I like to make things kind of real world, so I might even come in for another picture, and I might uh, go like, uh, paper towels because, and I, I, the reason I do that is because this is when I use algebra in real life, I try to figure out how I get the best deal. Do I get it out of the bounty or the brawny? Like how can you even calculate that? You got to know whether it's square feet or square meters or square yards. It's, it's complicated. It requires algebra. So there we go. So spend a minute drawing in an image adding a little text to your title page of your file. And please, when you have at least one picture in your file, put your hand raised uh, nonverbal signal in the, uh, on the meet. And under that add image where Jesse was pulling his paper towels would be where if you did have a worksheet saved, it's like a JPEG or an image on your computer. If you went in and did add new page, there was an option under the image selection there to upload from your device. And uh, there it says select image, you can upload. That would be where you would go if you wanted to upload a picture of a worksheet. Right? But it does, it creates a, it causes some problems when you just do it this way because then you have to lock it down and it would be possible for your kids to kind of unlock and delete that image. So it's always better to upload the PDF. But if you do need to upload an image or something saved to your device, that's where you get that. Yeah, nice thing is you can do this at any time during your development of your file, not just, not just in the beginning. In the beginning, it's just if you're importing a PDF for a Google slide, something like that. All right, I got one check mark. So let's see a couple more check marks because I really would like to get through a few couple other pages here. Anybody else have your image on there yet? Great. Thank you. Thank you for adding your raised hand when you added the picture. Thank you. Thank you. 
I see four, four raised hands. I'm looking for a few more. Great. That's like just that's uh, that's very close to everybody, if not everybody. Um, uh, terrific. Um, if anybody needs help, come in the chat and mention that you need a hand. If you stepped away, I totally understand. Okay, so on our next page, so now we made our title page, and I'm going to be done with that. But now we talked about how well this isn't the order. I don't want kids to come in and have like PDF, PDF, and then title page. That's all wrong. So you just click, if you look on the meet, I'll model this. I'm just clicking and dragging on that, that page, that third page, which was my title page. And I'm dragging it up to the first position, just like I would do uh, with a PowerPoint where I wanted to rearrange the slides. So the slides rearrange very nicely in SLS, just like PowerPoint. Um, so now the next thing, uh, I would want to do is, um, so now we've imported our PDF, we've created our title slide. The next thing we do is we want to create that match them up. But, you know, I want to talk about these PDF pages because, you know, remember how you guys had the up, you did them. They were, they were handouts for you. Um, they were handout activities, uh, for you when you got them. But right now they're not handout activities. They're just static flat pages that kids cannot interact with. You can do it from, as I showed you, from while you're running the lesson. But if you're delivering this asynchronously, you won't have that chance. So if you know that this is going to be an asynchronous lesson, then we're going to convert this to an activity in the editing phase. So just right down here at the bottom, it says convert to activity. I'm going to click the convert to activity bot button. And now I have the choices there of making it an individual handout or a collaborative workspace. I'm going to choose individual handout. The collaborative workspaces are going to be covered in the 203 section. So we want to keep you coming back. So now if we can, I can change the name up here, uh, ratios one and uh, but but you can tell that it's got this sort of green I uh, green what is wrong with my eyes purple icon that looks like a tablet with a stylus and and that's showing you that you have made this a handout activity and it, that it'll be something that students can interact with. So now if I came to this if I delivered this lesson as is they would come to the title page then they would have a handout and then they would have another static page. So what do I have to do to this page? Anybody come off mute and say what I need to do to this page. Click it and then hit convert to activity. Wonderful. Click it and convert to activity. And we're going to also make this one an individual handout activity. That's right. This is something that, you know, it, it, I've, I've seen it like a lot of times you forget the first time or two to make the right pages handout activities. So we'll make that a handout activity also. And it's very easy to do. So you've done that, and then uh, actually, let's see the thumbs up in the chat. If you, I'm the um, the the uh, the, the hand raised feature. If you're you're you converted it to a handout, please convert your PDF pages to a handout, and uh, just drop that raised hand feature from the Google Meet to show me, so I, so I can move on to the match them up. Great. I think we're doing good. We have, we, what, eight people now? I think we're good. Yeah. Me, well, no. Uh, Mr. Fuentes, uh, you, you good? How about yeah. Miss Maria? You good? Is so, it a hand up yet? I have a lot of pages, so it's going to take a while. Oh, you imported a massive PDF? It's 13 pages long. I, okay. So, but you see how to convert it to a PDF? Uh, my, my, to, my, my thing is, under it, it says edit or preview. Do I have to do anything with those? 
Oh, see, no, this is so nice. This means if you click the preview, this, uh, thank you for that question. If you see the preview button, that's what your students are going to see. That's what your students are going to see. And the edit means you want to undo it as a handout and readjust the page some more for them. If, that, yeah, if you're seeing edit and preview, then you're good. It means you've converted it to a handout. You don't have to do anything else to it. It just gives you the option to see what the kids will see or make changes if you need to. So if you're seeing edit preview, you're done, you're right, you're exactly where you need to be. Yeah, your visual cue that these are handouts is that you've got the purple tablet icon over top of the page. So we're going to move on to the interactive activity. So I'm going to click the blue plus to add a new page. This time the page is going to be a game-based activity. And the game-based activity, I'm going to click on. This, this is going to show all the different types of game-based activities we have here. So if you click the, the magnifying glass, you'll get a preview of it. So here you've got like a closed sentence version. You've got a matchup card game version. Um, and so these are all things that you may want to explore. I encourage you. I hope you explore them. Rank order, I happen to love. Super Swords, very versatile. But the one we're doing today is um, match them up right here. So I'm going to click on match them up. And now the way match them up works is you just add the, uh, you can add your categories that you want look labeled as, which is optional. So, uh, so I can say, um, but I'm I actually, this example doesn't require one. So I'm just going to put in a few examples like 12 inches uh, equals underscore CM and the answer is uh, 30 uh, uh, I'm sorry like 12 um, comma 48 I'm sorry whoopsie Thirty forty-eight, and in another example, uh, nine hours and uh, equals um, underscore minutes, and the answer to that is five forty. So, so we're you're just. And I'm actually going to, and I'll, I'll do one more, 5.5 um, days equals underscore minutes and 5.5 uh, day, uh, actually, I'm just going to go uh, 79, 20, 79, 20. Okay, so there we go. So. Actually, I think it's 30, oopsie, it's 30.48. So whatever, I put in my content, and basically it's got a match up across here. It scrambles it later, and I'm going to hit next. The last thing to point out, you can check your answers instantly, or you can have students click to check their answers separately. That's up to you. Um, next, I'll choose a background. This time I'm gonna choose, instead of garden, I'm gonna choose uh, superheroes and finish. Now from here, we can preview this. And I've got my, you know, this is how this game is gonna work. And they play the monster and they win. So. So right now we've got a title slide, a, an imported PDF that we've converted to worksheets, and a match em up game. So I'd ask you to give your best at making a, uh, doing a little bit of a matching game. And you know you can uh, you you can even add pictures to those um to those matching games as well. And that's something that we can uh, we don't have a lot of time to show you how to do, but hopefully we can show you how to do that. Um, can I have different pages be? Um and it, the students can work together, and then the one like page at the end when they have to do an individual essay be individual. 
Yeah, I love it because you're like the perfect person for next week's uh, session because we're going to work on collaborative workspaces in the next SLS uh, workshop. Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> can I sh can I just show you something or just no? Sure. Okay. Well, so you know what? Maybe I'll tell you what. Can we hang on with you a little bit late, like at three? You don't you don't mind staying a few minutes after? That way we'll stay on pace a little bit for this. Right. So. Can I see the hands up in the chat if you were able to make a matchup game? Excellent. I see a few matchup games there. Great. A few more people adding that they were able to add the matchup game. Great. Thank you. Good. And just while people are putting their hands up, Timothy asked about SLSO 203. Um, we're, we're doing 203 next week, but I, I feel like I made it seem like it was only next week, and it's not because we did the – 201 session for quite a few weeks in a row, and now we've done the 202 for quite a few weeks in a row, and then I guess for the next month or so, we're going to be offering the 203. So you're going to have time to register for it. You should get a link. Because you attended 202, you should be, not a link, but it will allow you to register for 203. But you got to give it a couple days. It takes a while for them to reconcile the attendance, and that's how people are allowed to register in Cornerstone for the next step. So give it a few days and then you'll be able to register. Excellent. Got a thumbs up on that answer, Beth. All right. Um, so last thing we're going to talk about is that exit ticket. So let's just try and then, uh, well, in terms of developing, and then we're going to talk about delivering this lesson. So I'm going to go back to my, that blue plus. If you want to follow along with what I'm doing, you'll click on the meet tab. Click, I'm clicking on the blue plus. Now I've got these other sections of ready-made resources. And in questioning and reflection, they've got some pre-made things for us. So I'm going to click on the big yellow box, which is questioning and reflection, where I see 12 things that have been pre-made. And one of them is this summary tab, explain what, uh, how would you explain what you've learned? So I'm going to click on that. Now, this one you'll see actually came in as a handout. So that's fine. I'm going to preview it. Pretend your friend was absent today. How would you know you've learned? And I just want to show you that one more time. I'm going to come in here. I hit the plus. And when I click on that questioning and reflection, do you see how where it's little blue, it says shout out activities? That's a certain type of activity. Then it says response activities. That's a certain type of online quiz activity. But now we get to these ones in purple where we are, again, recognizing that t purple tablet icon with the stylus. That, so when, when you click one of these, you don't have to do the convert to handout. It's already converted to a handout for you. So that's why I didn't have to do anything to make it um, give me this purple icon. It just came in that way. So give me, I'm going to lower everybody's hands. And then when you've added that exit ticket, please, um, please put the raise hand button back up. Okay, I'm going to give that an excellent, excellent. Looking for, okay, excellent. Uh, Mr. Fuentes, you got that? Mr. Levy, got that? Sorry, did you say it's under responses, Mr. Berg? Uh, oh, it uh, looks like, uh, oh, no, no. I'm sorry. Thank you for asking, sir. It is under questioning and reflection. Thank you. Smart Response is a very, very good online quizzing tool. Um, it's good for synchronous delivery of lessons, not asynchronous. But it's something that I would strongly encourage you to ask your ed tech coach to show you about. You know, hey, can you spend 15 minutes with me and show me Smart Response? I'd be happy to if I were the coach at your school. It's really, really good. It's one of the best online quiz platforms we have, I think. Um, so question reflection. So now you're good to go? Awesome. Good. We got seven minutes left. We're killing it. Bring All right, so, home. so so we're bringing it. We're Allah. We're bringing it in for a landing here. Close down all all all, all windows and doors. 
If you're a Sixers fan, you know I'm quoting, quoting Mark Zuma or I'm trying. All right, so now if you haven't changed the name of your file up top, uh, come back into there up top and give it a name that you think is logical. And then when you're done that, uh, I'm, you're going to just click finish editing, the white button to your to the left. Okay, when you've when you have uh, lower all. Okay, great. So I'm going to close my file now. Everybody renamed it. Uh, has everybody renamed it? Oh, yes, you can edit again later, Miss Regan. Yes, yes, yes. I'll show you how. So I'm going to click finish editing. Come over to the meet with me for a second. In the meet, I'm going to click finish editing. So now I'll see that I've got a, a version of it right here in my Smart Learning Suite class window. But that's really just a mirror of where it actually lives. Who can tell me, who can come off mute and, and tell me where this file actually lives? In my Google I, Drive. In my Google Drive. Google see, because that's the key thing. How can I find it again? I know I just made it. How can I find it again? So. I'm going to actually close this window, close this tab, and I'm going to close this tab. Now, here I am in my Google Drive, and this is the one I made today, SLSO 21, SLSO 2, 26, 21 template. This is the one I made today. So I'd like everybody to just uh, look well, actually, I don't want you to do this first. I want to show you how to share it out first. Does everybody feel that you can find this again in your Google Drive? Yes. All right. I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up, but I, I um, and I see a big thumbs up there from Mr. Fuentes. That's that makes me happy. All right. So I see a lot of thumbs up for the for, for the you can find this again in your Google Drive. So now I want to show you how to share this lesson asynchronously to kids for independent practice. So, all right, I know it's here, but I can not take a share link right out of Drive. It's the wrong, you don't do it that way. Here's what you do do. You open the file. I click to open it with Smart Learning Suite. I hope you're watching me along in my Meet tab. The file opens. Here's how I share it with students. I go to the three lines in the top left. When I click on that, I come down and I see that I've got a share link right here. I'm going to click on that share link and I got two choices. I could give a teacher a copy of this lesson. And if I wanted to give a peer, a copy of this lesson, I'd copy that and I'd email it to them. But for my students, it says let students access this lesson and work at their own pace. Asynchronous learning, that's exactly what I want. I click copy. It tells me the link is copied. Now I'm going to go right over to my Google Classroom. I'm going to launch my classroom. I'm going to go to classwork. And I'm going to make an assignment out of this in my classwork class. So assignment, ratios, complete, SLSO, file on ratios I give as an explanation. Now I'm going to add a link. And the link is going to be to that file. Add link. Now here I can paste it by doing command V or edit paste and add link. Now this I can then assign. Now this I'm not going to truly assign it because I don't want to clutter my, I don't want to send it to 85 people in my classroom. So I'm going to say save it as a draft. But this is how you 
set and there you see it right there ratios do you have to make a copy for each student no no see that's just, i'm so glad you asked but that gets us back to this idea that the work is not a, saved as a separate document the student work is all saved within the teacher document that you create that is different than any other computer file that we've ever worked with before things don't work that way except for this so it really is a mind shift to understand that the student work is really stored in there in page seven or eight or wherever that handout is in your slso file that's a really big takeaway from today's workshop if that idea sinks in and makes a lot of sense to you then you've gained a tremendous thing from today because that is how this program works and it's different from how the google stuff works but it's practical so anybody want to summarize come off uh mic and summarize how you share an asynchronous lesson with students and i'm putting the attendance link in now sorry so caught up in jesse's wonderful presentation that i was not great with putting the attendance in <laughs> that's all right that kept everybody here um <laughs> Uh, so Beth put the attendance and she'll be putting a few more. Anybody want to come off uh, mute real fast and explain that? Or do you just want to digest that and uh, call it a week? I got you. I'll do it. So from your Google Drive, you're going to open uh, that file with the smart learning suite. Go to that hamburger at the top left, the three lines. Uh, click on share the link where you have an option to either share that link with teachers or students, uh, copy that link, and then to create it as an assignment for the students, go to Google Classroom, create an assignment, add the link to that, and then assign it. Maybe I'll just have you do my workshop for me next week. <laughs> I, do this. I really appreciate that. That was a great summary of how to do it. Yeah. So I also put in, you have the attendance link now, you have the digital learning site, educator hub, and the agenda. I know we're, we're at 301, so it's Friday. Once you're done the attendance, if you want to pop off, feel free. If you have any more questions, Jeff and I can hang out for a few minutes and uh, help you out. Yeah, don't pop off at me or Beth. Just pop off the Google Meet and call it a good work, week, good week of work. <laughs> okay. And um, so I, I thank you all very much. I'm gonna I'm gonna close down the recording now. But Beth and I are gonna stay. I'm gonna stay online. Beth might have to run. I'm gonna stay online for a few minutes and take any questions. I know one or two people had questions they wanted to follow up with. But uh, thanks a lot. It's been an enjoyable uh, 80 minutes. A good way to wrap up the week. I'm uh, grateful for you. Thank you so much.